Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, some fruit trees in the Anona family. Uh, the uh, sugar apple, the ilama, the atamoya, the custard apple, the soursop, maybe a little rolinia. I guess they're not Anona. He's, that's not an Anona, but... Anyway, I'm just going to talk about how we grow them. Check these black sapotes while I'm here. They're still not quite ripe. The lemons are lemons are doing well. My fruit leaf tea video was not uh, received very well. I think it's because I put phytochemical in the title. It's just such a amazing uh, crop that's so under uh, utilized. Uh, and sugar apple leaf has been shown to be anti-cancerous and HEPA protective, so it protects your uh, liver and has a bunch of amazing health benefits. I'm going to do a link to a study I read on that. So along the driveway I wanted to have all Atamoya trees and I couldn't find that when I first planted this eight years ago. Uh, These were the first trees I planted and I bought about, I don't know, 100 and 20 uh, sugar apple trees because I could find sugar apples. So I planted the red ones on the left of the Kampong mob and the uh, chewy green sugar apples on the right. Of course, or no, the red ones are on the right and the chewy green are on the left, but some of them ended up being the Thai lesser instead of the red sugar apples. Uh, you know, nurseries make mistakes. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's disappointing, but I had a hundred freaking sugar. I have, we have like over a hundred sugar apple trees, so it's not really a problem. Uh, it doesn't bother me any, any, uh, too much. So in, <clears throat> in between all these sugar apples, I planted ginger and I never watered these sugar apples and I've never, they've never needed any water and they produce very well. The trees along this side of the driveway, because it's disconnected from this side of the farm, which has all the other trees in it, it's disconnected because of this driveway, and then the neighbors spread glyphosate on our fence in our property, uh, which affected some trees. The mangoes definitely were affected by it, and they're still being affected by it. So I planted mangoes at every uh, ginger, and then there's... Uh, a, uh, there's uh, Achachiro I planted where the sugar apples were. Uh, right there is a seedling uh, uh, Achachiro. But the sugar apple died here and I replaced it with Atamoya seedlings and died there when they sprayed. For some reason this is the only spot along the driveway here and there, there's another spot down there where they sprayed, where they sprayed directly into our property, onto our trees, uh, glyphosate. It's uh, going on two years now. And uh, so they haven't done it up here. They did it uh, last summer in the back, but they haven't done it since then, since I uh, told them, please stop doing that. Um, but I try to get my daily manure as an input, and that's what that is. So I'm trying to get them for the mangoes and the sugar apples and the ginger and the achiero all along here before these mangoes start blooming. Because you have to wait uh, 120 days after applying raw manure before you can sell fruit to the public. Sugar apples will be fine, but the, the mangoes had started blooming in the back. But I don't see them even swelling up here. The mangoes look really good. There's some good mangoes up here. There's a, this is a, a sea, uh, sea graves or a triple sec. That's been one of my favorite mangoes, but last year it did not produce any fruit. But anyway, back to the, the anonas. So the anonas with ginger planting next to them all seem to do better than the ones that didn't have ginger. So in between each sugar apple, 
uh, I uh, first I planned the sugar apples, then I did one rhizome. So one of these, just one like this, one little, one little leaf, this, in between each one that turned into this. It all came from one gallon pots. And then we combine in our farm plan, we combine syntropic and per permaculture and various forms of natural farming, Korean natural farming, uh, Japanese natural farming and biodynamic farming and Indian zero budget natural farming. This is a peach cobbler. No, this, yeah. Is this peach cobbler? Yes, this is a peach cobbler mango. And this is a guava mango. Just want to point them out because uh, they're good mangoes. So I haven't started putting the manure on that side because I wanted to get the side that had the mangoes near them first because the anonas are going to start fruiting uh, later in the year. We do have quite a bit of sugar apples uh, and atamoyas on our trees, but not along the driveway here. So this is what it looks like, the daily manure, and I'll show you. This is what we use as our compost. So this is where the uh, sugar apples died, and the mango doesn't look very healthy, and one mango died when they sprayed, and um, uh, the sugar apples just in this spot. And the ginger died here, which was odd. So they just squirted it in there and uh, just did too much of it. But the achacheros are looking really nice. And there's a little sugar apple that broke during a uh, windstorm. But the rest of the mangoes, or the, the uh, sugar apples look great. This one doesn't look that good. Just in this section here and in that section up there. It was weird. <clears throat> We're affected. But here's the, the red sugar apples. They look good. They respond very well to this uh, daily manure. It's uh, when we clean out our barn, it's coastal Bermuda grass hay and uh, urine and uh, from the barn, from the miniature zebus and uh, manure, like 20 pounds of manure every day. So each one of these piles represents a day of cleaning out the barn. And that's what our daily input is. It's basically our compost. So all these uh, sugar apples are looking quite good. I'll show you what the compost looks like. And it's what I start my, uh, like I start my sugar apple seeds in when I start them in pots or I start my cacao in when I start them in, uh, in pots. I've shown that in previous videos. Um, and I love the chewy sugar apples. So we grow the chewy red and the chewy green sugar apples, but we do have some Thai lesser sugar apples and some Kampong Ma of red sugar apples, which are the uh, mushy type sugar apples. Look at this seed grown peach. It looks really good. I had to like push that, those leaves down because they were interfering with this, this tree. It's a gift from my friend, Frank. My aeroids are looking good. It's a Cebu blue. What is it? I can't think of the name. Anyway, here's our and our uh, our uh, Rolinia trees. We have two Rolinia trees, and they've never been watered, and they're getting quite large, and they bloom pretty much nonstop, and eventually they're gonna produce fruit, but. Uh, they haven't. It has not been a 100% success story, but I really just started giving them uh, large quantities of inputs and they responded well to it. And the leaves on this lower portion just dropped off from the drought we had. During drought, uh, they can drop all their leaves, uh, and but survive. I mean, look at how big they are. They're little tiny trees. I'm not about to start watering them to see if I can get fruit because I know they are gonna fruit and hold fruit eventually. Uh, it just hasn't happened for us yet. And neither has Guanabana, but uh, it'll happen. I can wait. Lots of flowers. We got a lot of rain. Here's a big mulberry that uh, should be starting to flower soon. 
And then we have like hundreds of banana trees, all ice cream bananas. It's amazing the bees are so active so early in the morning uh, on these things. These are Namdak Maya mangoes. This is a Florigon, or this is a Malika mango. That's a Florigon mango. That's a Florigon mango, and then more ice cream bananas. There's another Florigon mango there. So we make our own compost, and it's our daily manure, and then I just do low piles of it. I do a lot of low piles, and this is an area I do it in. Uh, all I've been doing it around this tree for years and years and years and and you can clearly see that the soil aggregates um, from our cow manure and it's like black gold basically these are just little uh, aggregated mineralized carbon is what it is it all like turns into humus and uh, with sand in it, mineral mineral component in it. Uh, but that's what the zebu manure does. And there was some here that I did. I need to do some more piles because I'm kind of low on it, but I can take manure from, or I can take compost from one of my daily piles. I wait for the weeds to grow in it. Like here's a pile right here. I wait for the weeds to grow in it and then it's usually assimilated to soil sim somewhat but you can see it aggregates it's totally aggregated soil uh, and that doesn't happen with all compost but when you add the miniature zebu manure to it it uh, definitely mineralizes it and you're guaranteed to have phenomenal results and when you start seeds in it a lot of people have trouble with their seeds getting um, Fusarium wilt. We don't get that with our, uh, uh, our our compost, and it's been shown that the uh, uh, the, the cow manure uh, has uh, uh, anti uh, fungal properties that present, pr protect uh, plants from uh, fungal pathogens. So it's plant beneficial, and the zebu manure is a nitrogen fixing manure so uh this is a, a, a super julie tree and it's huge and i gave it a lot of manure to see if it would uh, grow really fast and i have one planted next to a uh, a uh, inga tree and it was planted the same time and it's half the size of this so Definitely the zebu manure input, you know, in combination with all of this uh, uh, diverse uh, biology here from the uh, diverse foliage that I've planted in here and what nature has put in there, which is our orchard floor. We don't kill out all the weeds and stuff. We leave what nature puts in there and then we like, well, I will, uh, crop it or um, you know do a, s snap the tops of the trees that show up or th these these particular weeds is some sort of uh, nettle I uh, they can smother a tree so I don't like really like them I'm working my way up to the the uh, the anonas the sugar the su more sugar apples the custard apples and the llama and the, um, but I'm looking at this uh, sugarloaf mango and it's like in full on bloom and it's just starting to smell delicious. And then this Venus mango is also in full on bloom. It's really amazing. <clears throat> so I have some sugar apples over here. I might as well look at them since I'm like, this is one of my paths. This is how our whole property used to be before I mowed. <laughs> And here's my vegetable garden, and I just never uh, worked on it. And I see I have lots of radishes, and I just have not come over here and picked anything, but I guess I need to. 
this is all dry farmed uh, stuff I, that I just I mixed uh, zebu manure in the soil. I I mulched out uh, with the 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 daily manure. That's why it's all there's no weeds in it. And then I wait a few months, and then when it's time to plant, then I scrape back a little bit and then plant my seeds directly in it in the mix of zebu manure in the soil and then I don't water anything and it's always worked well and I haven't had any problems with anything so we have a few sugar apples over here I just want to show them this is a sugar apple seedling it's growing next to this uh, big inga tree I had a sugar apple here but I accidentally snapped it when I was picking my weeds. Some sugar apples here, not a lot. I need to plant some more. And little mango seedlings I planted this year popping up above the weeds. So I finally got rid of my hives thanks to my teas that I made. And I do red light therapy because red light and especially morning light, which is a, you know, red light, uh, morning sunlight depletes deuterium from your body. And deuterium is a, it's a hydrogen that is like a double hydrogen. So it's, it's, uh, I can't really explain it well. I'm not really a quantum biologist, but it has been shown to, according to uh, quantum biologist Jack Cruz, Dr. Jack Cruz, uh, he believes it's the root cause of all disease, the deuterium that's uh, in our our water and our food. And so there's a deuterium depleting diet. So it's like, it's a diet that um, de deuterium, D-E-U-T-E-R-I-U-M, um, A deuterium depleting diet, so root vegetables have deuterium in it, and leafy greens don't, and basically grains and legumes have deuterium in it, and processed food has deuterium in it, and water, except for water on at sea level, is low in deuterium. Fruit have deuterium in it, high deuterium. But fruit grown at sea level is less likely to have the deuterium. I believe I, I saw that on uh, Dr. Sarah Pugh's, uh, one of her videos. These radishes are very good, actually. So, the red light from red light therapy um, removes uh, deuterium, which deuterium has been shown to be a uh, an antagonist to histamines from, with gut bacteria. So I did my red light therapy, which I hadn't done since before I went on vacation. I had one of those weird helmets. And I the hives are completely gone now. And it's just really amazing. I didn't have to change my diet or anything. It's just I started changing my diet and it did work to, you know, get the histamine... Uh, uh, Le foods that were lower in histamines, like, um, I don't know, there's avocados are high in histamine, so uh, a bread was high in histamine. So I cut my bread and it instantly started getting better. So my little cacao tree, um, it's starting dropping some of these, because uh, there was just too much fruit on this tree, this little tree, and so it started dropping some. And it needed to do that, but it's not dropping all of them. It's dropping some of them, but I expect it to hold like 10 fruit or so, but uh, it's not because it's been cold, because this tree has been down to 31 degrees without any problems, without any leaf loss. It carried the fruit with it. So I know that that's not it. And um, here's my little cacaos I started that, you know, they don't get any. Somebody said that you need to like remove the membranes of the cacao 
seeds before you plant them, but all of them, all of them grow. It's, it's the soil you use. For some reason, people don't talk about soil uh, when they uh, want to know what's wrong with their plant. I don't know what's wrong with our agricultural system where we <clears throat> don't look at the soil. Um, and especially when they give advice on uh, how to grow, uh, uh, let's say, anonas in Florida. And they suggest, uh, you know, removing everything from around the tree and planting on a mound and or planting on a mound if you're in like a low-lying area because uh, anonas hate standing water. They'll die from standing water. And then they use mowing to control weeds and grass. Uh, that's the farm plan here for everything. You can All you have to do is drive through a citrus grove and see what they do. They, they mow everything and they spray glyphosate and they remove everything from around the tree. But in a dry farm system like this, you cannot remove the, the weeds from around the plant. And when you, when you drive on Florida sand that has grass and weeds on it, it creates a carpet that, that creates a, a totally compacted uh, substrate that you're, they expect the trees to grow in. And when you, when you have that, and then you're applying fertilizers and herbicides and fungicides, you're killing all the biology, and the biology is what's needed for your plant to be able to signal to its environment to call for the bacteria and the distribution of bacteria into its uh, cell walls to create the phytochemicals needed to prevent uh, insect herbivores from eating it or to uh, protect it from drought. So all this uh, knowledge they teach, they know is wrong. They have to know. All oh, right, Romy. I forgot my little angel is here. I put him on this other jackfruit tree since the last jackfruit tree I've been tying him to. Uh, he, it started blooming, so I uh, figured I'd do it on this jackfruit tree. Hi, Romy. How are you, honey? His horns are coming out. He's a little boy. He's a tiny little guy. He's going to remain tiny. He's just super sweet. Uh, him and his mother are like inseparable now. Thankfully, he doesn't try to nurse off her because she is due again. She's pregnant. So um, he's looking so much better since he's been out on pasture. Anyway, this, the, this people that are teaching this, these, these farm plans are causing the disease and the death, early death of the citrus groves. And uh, uh, that's a reason why I make these videos. So here's a sugar apple. So I'm getting close to my sugar apples. So I did a row of sugar apples along the driveway here, but I also had three other rows here. Um, this is one that's left of the sugar apples. And here's one that's left. I've since, they've since, they died actually because of compaction. I'm positive it's because of the compaction. Uh, and uh, it took me a while to fix the compaction or even to realize that it was the compaction because this was all mowed lawn, so it was highly compacted. So when it rained, it would go and sit here. Even though my sugar apples and everything were on a mound or you know up higher uh, and didn't have any standing water next to them, they still they still all pretty much died. Everything I planted in here would either freeze or die in this area here. The only ones that didn't die are the ones that had ginger planted next to them. Isn't that interesting? I don't know if that is what saved them or what it was, but it, it worked here and it worked on the driveway because none of them died until they sprayed those those chemicals, the glyphosate, into our yard. So I just wanted to show this other Super Julie tree and planted next to the Inca tree because I did mention it. And to so that you could see that it's like, uh, it's planted basically 
adjacent to that Inga Cinemonii tree right there, a Brazilian um, Inga tree. And it's also next to ginger. And I have given this one daily input last year. I'm gonna try to get some daily manure on it too. But the tree is nowhere near as big as that other super julie and neither are the other super julies that i planted that i didn't give multiple piles of daily uh daily manure to it does make a difference uh it's an amazing product the cow manure on florida soils and why we never pursued that and why we started pursuing the um, poisoning of our cows through uh, GMO corn and glyphosate ready corn and uh, uh, graze on on our fields and wormers and because our, our miniature zebus are all ho holistically grown and we don't use mineral blocks we do not worm them but we do rotationally graze them and we only feed them grass <clears throat> they only eat grass so I had a trail here with these sugar apples that are through here and the sugar apples down by this telephone pole have always been the like slowest to grow, but stuff is starting to grow in here. And here's our uh, longan. And I just want to look at these uh, mangoes down here and also look at a custard apple tree I have over here because <clears throat> I wanted to see if they're like getting ready to bloom. They're not. Here's a, that's a floragon. This is a Namdak Mai. And... It looks like it might be trying to swell, but I hope not because I want to try to get some daily manure on, on it. So it's 120 days. So it's a roll. There's that Inga tree and there's that Super Julie tree. So this is a, a Nona uh, reticulata. <clears throat> and it's looking good, but it's this particular tree... They have not flowered yet. It's kind of been like the Guanabana, or not the, yeah, the Guanabana and the, the Rolinia. So it has been stingy with the fruit production, but I believe this is a little more cold sensitive, like the Guanabana and the Rolinia, and I think that could have something to do with it. But the tree looks very healthy and the leaves look very nice. And the uh, tree has bloomed and it's finally started growing well. And it's planted next to the ginger and it's planted next to the inga and it's got pigeon pea and it's got the orchard floor that nature put here, mostly the biddens and the grass and nitrogen fixing weeds. And it's also planted next to the hel heliconia and some bananas. So it's got a good, um, the soil is very soft here too. So this was like one of the most com compacted spots in the yard uh, because they came in here with their their trucks. They used to drive right in here with their trucks and work on the telephone pole uh, that was here. And then they replaced this telephone pole. <sighs> Pepper trees. I pull them up. I hate them. I don't hate them, but I just don't want them. They're just, for me, they're too much work. They're not worth it to crop. Probably our system would be better if I left them there um, and managed them, but it's just me, myself, and I at the moment. So I'm gonna go look at these sugar apples and then I'm gonna work my way over to the Adamoya and then the Guanabana last, lastly. So they're looking good and we have fruit on them and not on these right here, but this is the first year they, they produce more than one crop. So uh, our beach house sugar apples that have been there for 13 years produce fruit year round. So. This uh, fruit is quite nice and it's getting big. It's got big eyes, which I like to see because that, that is indicative of less seeds. This is a chewy red sugar apple. <coughs> and I know I've seen, <coughs> excuse me, more fruit over here. Oh, there's some here. There's a fruit right there I see. And I know I've seen fruit on here. I hate going through here because I used to have this mode, but the, these weeds, these Caesar weeds get nasty stickers on them this time of year and they stick all over everything. And, but look at how nice these sugar apple trees look. They're looking good. <coughs> this ginger died, but it's, it's come back unlike the other one. It's the only ginger I believe that died here. So here's more 
sugar apples. Not a lot of fruit, but that's better than nothing. Um, this particular tree has quite a bit of fruit on it. And I'm trying to see what's different about it. It's right next to this big pigeon pea. And I see some cashews popping up in here. There should be a lot more. There should be more mangoes in here. There's mangoes that had froze. Like I said, this everything that I had planted in here had would die and or freeze. And it used to have frost settle on it every year right through here. But these sugar apples right here, not a problem. So this has lots of sugar apples on it. Um, this one is like, when they get anthracnose, they, uh, they don't do very good. Oh, it's ripe. I love sugar apples. And after I found out how healthy they are for you, I have a new found love for them. There's uh, more fruit here. So here's a, this is the Atamoya here, though it does look like a sugar apple, the leaves, maybe not, but I'm pretty sure it's an Atamoya, a Priestly Atamoya, and this is definitely a Lisa Atamoya. I'm trying to see if it has any fruit on it. I, my favorite Atamoyas have been the, uh, The priestly Atamoya. They just produce so well and we don't pollinate anything. It's all hand pollinate or all <laughs> pollinated by nature and there's fruit on this tree and there's fruit on this tree. So we have okay fruit set for winter. It's nothing to uh, to be disappointed about. I know that and I'm trying to peel this sugar apple. It's a little sugar apple. Very good. Mmm. God, they're good. Chewy sugar apples. Nadai, that's what they're called. I'm trying to see more fruit. So our beach house sugar apples are the are the Thai lesser, so they're the non-chewy type. I really wish there was a trail through here that was mowed. I can't believe I didn't mow my path. There's another custard apple that's finally getting a side a size, a seed-grown custard apple. This one has not flowered yet. There's a big glob of sugar apples right here. So nice to have tropical fruit every day to eat. Yeah, the anthracnose, it doesn't, I mean, it's really, it's better than spraying uh, copper on them to prevent it. Because as you know, copper builds up in the soil and it kills all aquatic life and it kills biology in the soil, and it also has been shown to be a trigger for Alzheimer's. So they figure it might be, um, have something to do with uh, dementia, heavy metals. Deuterium, uh, Jack Cruz says, is, is a heavy metal. So heavy metals are not good. Uh, that's why micronutrients, when people apply micronutrients, this is elometry, seed grown elometry, it's doing good. It's, Kind of lost some leaves from the i guess going into winter but it's still doing good um heavy metals and micronutrients people apply micro micronutrient fertilizers uh, they've been shown to be high in heavy metals like lead and cadmium and um, different heavy metals that <coughs> are not healthy for you I mean, it's not a good thing it's another atomoya there's a sugar apple. I don't see any fruit. I see some fruit on this one. I see a big giant fruit up there that looks very close to being ripe. Looks like it's about softball size or a little less, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
I really need to bring my machete and here's what I need to do since I'm not mowing. So this tree has a lot of, a lot of uh, sugar apples on it, I see. I'm covered in stickers, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I didn't want. That's why we mow the, <clears throat> mow the paths. So this is a uh, Geffner Atamoya. And I see some more sugar apples down there on those trees. And I'm not going to go through that mess, but I'm going to see because I thought that this had some Atamoya still on it. Geffner is a good producer. I don't think it's the most flavorful Atamoya, but it is a good tree for Florida. Um, I like the Anonas. I like them more now that I know how uh, good their leaves are for um, for human health. All the bioactive compounds in them, the, the phytochemicals, it's just like really amazing. So I had uh, done a video before. There's one of the uh, sugar apple right here. But I did a video because my friend Frank gave me a, one of those red Geffner sugar, uh, Atamoyas. And it almost died, but I was like, rather than let it die in the location it was, I dug it up and planted it right next to this sugar apple, right next to this Atamoya, because I knew that they were doing good in this spot. And it looks great. So I know it's gonna survive. I have to get through here to get over to the Guanabana. It's like cassava forest here. I put a bunch of daily manure through here. Um, to fix the freeze problem but what really fixed it like instantly was was uh the biodynamic 500 horn i planted i don't know a lot of like 40 horns in here uh i, I shoved manure uh zebu manure in the horn and then inoculated them where i make my compost where i've been making compost for years and then dug them up after six months and then reburied them here. After it froze all my mangoes through here, I was like not having it anymore. And that changed everything. That's when stuff started growing in here. And now we have little Atamoyas. I'm trying to look for one right now uh, that grow in here. And um, there's one right here. Seedling Atamoyas and a little rabbit. The rabbits dug up my most expensive freaking palm, my Joey Diamond Joey palm. <laughs> Tiny little palm that I paid way too much money for that I found black dug up on the ground. Oh well, I, I can't really <laughs> let that stuff bother you when you, <laughs> it's just, they're gonna find your favorite plant. So I'm gonna go over to the Guanabana tree <clears throat> sure wish these uh, black sapotes would get with the program and ripen up, please. There's a, quite a few of them. Uh, we got a lot of star fruit right now. My partner can eat it, but I can't. I'm fa fairly certain it was a trigger for my hives <clears throat> after I, I killed my gut bacteria by... Uh, eating processed, thought processed food is high in deuterium. Um, eating uh, a non-healthy foods while I was on vacation. And uh, when I came back and started doing all my, so many different, because I try to eat 30 to 60 plants now a day, but I was eating definitely more than 30 a day before I went, all organic, all clean foods or as clean as you can get from organic. It's not really clean anymore with all the microplastics in it. And, um, but, so that's what I did. But then when I went and I ate that food and then I came back and I started doing all my like huge uh, vegetables and, and fruits and stuff, because I'm vegan and uh, I didn't have the, the biology in my gut because it got severely damaged because I had been eating healthy for two years, hadn't eaten in a restaurant more than two years, and then came back and did that, and I had developed food allergies uh, from histamine high foods. So uh, there's a, a Inga tree, Inga spectabilis, growing next to this, right next to this mango. 
I, I just don't see the nitrogen fixers trees speeding things up, but I have noticed that the in combination with this and with zebra manure speeds things up greatly. So our whole system is uh, designed around soil health in combination with regenerative farm practices. And then when you just focus on do not disturb the soil and applying animal inputs, it takes care of the other other uh, soil health principles like uh, putting a living root in the ground, keeping the, when you don't disturb it, that means you're not like mulching everything out. It doesn't mean not to use mulch, just that don't kill everything. That's our philosophy. So then when you just use those two soil health principles, do not disturb and animal, using, incorporating animals into the system, then you put a, the nature will put the living roots in the ground. It will provide the cover on your system and take care of all the soil health principles. So this is a big guanabana tree, a Miami guanabana tree. It got beat up by the wind storm we had here. Oh, that's what those uh, brownish leaves are up there. But it had flowers on it and I'm sure I could find one if I looked. Um, this tree is always affected by below 50 degrees. Uh, I can't see any flowers, but this is a peach cobbler mango. It's looking good. I need to get some manure on there quick. I don't see it swelling. I don't see this one swelling. <clears throat> Normally our mangoes all bloom at the same time. This is the first year this didn't, this didn't happen. So this area had mangoes die or freeze from the 31 degrees. But I, I applied, a, put a lot of horns in here, the biodynamic 500 horn. I believe in biodynamic farming. We're just not biodynamic certified, nor are we organic certified. We were at one point, I understand it, but I feel my videos show people what we do and I explain clearly enough and I make enough videos that uh, I, I didn't feel the need to be certified. And to be honest with you, people thought around here thought that we were like a liberal elite because we were a snob and organic and then uh, people don't believe in organic around here. Some do, but a lot of them don't. It's very hard to get organic pro produce around here. Very hard. Um, so there's a Santal tree. I'm going over to a Guanabana seedling and look at this uh, world's best uh, mulberry to see if it's like fruiting. It's not. So uh, my friend Frank, one of his properties, he has like 25 acres, uh, th uh, th three different properties in Indian River County and does thousands of fruit trees. That's where he gives me some of the fruit trees. Frank and Annette, his, his wife Annette. And um, so they give me fruit trees and they have a fruiting uh, guanabana tree that uh, is in Felsmere, which what used to be 9B, and it definitely is a lot colder out there. It's further inland and a little bit further north, but it definitely gets a lot colder. But I planted like 100 uh, seedlings of that because uh, he gave me a bunch of seeds, and I like to plant seeds. So here's... I uh, don't want to step on me. Here's a guanabana tree, and this tree never loses its leaves. It just looks really healthy. It never got bothered by the wind. It is a little bit more protected here, but I was just blown away that that one tree, there's probably others coming up. They're just not that big. This one tree is like doing so well. I'm figured it'll probably, <laughs> it might produce fruit before uh, that other, that other uh, large Miami, but I'm pretty sure that Miami uh, uh, one abana tree is going to produce fruit very soon. Here's our uh, one of our bread nut trees. They're like popped up, doing really good. Growing next to some little mushrooms. Anyway. That's our fruit trees of the day, the anonas, the sugar apple, the adamoya, 
the custard apple, the llama, and, and uh, the guanabana. Um, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and I hope you have an excellent day. Thanks for watching.